there are many ways to tell the history of a people. The most common way, the way we heard the most as children, might be termed great figure history. Tell the story of America, you hear about Washington, Franklin, and Lincoln. Share the history of science, and you talk about Pythagoras, Galileo, Newton, Darwin. Even most church histories are told in the same way. Augustine, Luther, Wesley, and in our context, Reverend Lori Ray, Bishop Lloyd Knox, Reverend Dr. Jim Harnish. It was not until graduate school that I learned that this kind of great figure history isn't the only way to talk about history, nor is it even always the best one. For one thing, great figure history is often really great man history and slights the contributions of women over time. But the other problem is that this kind of top-down, iconic person history ignores the contributions of lesser-known people. What if we can remember that history is driven not by the influence of a few, but by the contributions of community? And in the context of our faith, what if we began to think about the church less as being made up of a few great figures and more as a dynamic collection of many people, including even you? Today, in our journey through the theme of resilience, we remember this fundamental truth. Resilience is found when God's people join together to support each other, care for each other, and love each other. There is no room for great figure history when it comes to the faith. We are all part of each other's resilience. At first glance, the story of Nehemiah might seem like just another example of great figure history. I mean, after all, the book is named after him. We might think he is the only important person in the story. But then along comes Nehemiah chapter 3, passages that I am sure have never been on anyone's memory verse list, like verses 3 and 4. <clears throat> the sons of Hasanah built the fish gate. They laid its beams and set up its doors, its bolts, and its bars. Next to them, Meramot, son of Uriah, son of Hakots, made repairs. Next to them, Meshulam, son of Berechiah, son of Meshezabel, made repairs. Next to them, Tzadok, son of Baana, made repairs. The word of God for the world, thanks be to God. And all God's people said, huh? Chapter 3 goes on like this for 32 verses. And by the time we get to the end, we read about 75 names, obscure names, hard to pronounce names, persons that we hear nothing more about in the entire Bible. Yet, the chronicler of the Nehemiah story felt it important enough to list them. Why? Because of this important spiritual principle, in the spiritual life, every person has a role to play. No contribution is too small, and we need each other in order to stand strong and resilient against the hardships of life. If you look closely at Nehemiah 3, which you may want to do sometime, especially if you're having trouble sleeping, you'll discover that not only were people named, we are told what responsibility they had and what part of the wall they were working on. Some of the people were there to work on the gates of the wall. I mean, this massive 27 mile long, a half a football field deep wall had at least nine gates. And they're all listed by name in Nehemiah 3, along with the specific people who worked on each one. And it's important to remember that a church needs its gates. A church is only as strong as its ability to welcome new people in and call people out in service to the community. Some of you, in your own unique way, are called to work the gates to ensure that this church extends the love of God beyond its walls. Some of the people in Nehemiah 3 were assigned to work on the towers. The towers in the ancient Near East represented strength and protection, confidence, a reminder of how the city can withstand threats and harm. And some of you, in your own unique way, ensure this church's strength and witness through your faithful commitment and conviction 
as you contribute your time, your talent, your passion, your voice, and your financial gifts. Some of the people in Nehemiah 3 were assigned to make repairs to certain parts of the wall, to take what was broken and bring it back to wholeness. And some of you, in your own unique way, offer gifts of healing and compassion to people in need. Your visits to our elderly and homebound or your calls and visits to people who are hurting. This third chapter of Nehemiah is here to remind us that in the grand history of the people of God, it is the contributions of every person, not just the iconic ones, working at the gates, the towers, and the broken places that drive the work of God forward. Several years ago, this church began a tradition that celebrates the contributions of such people in the congregation. The denomination instituted a distinction called the Honorary Member of the Charge Conference, which acknowledges members of the church whose lives and witness embody the mission of the church, setting an example for all of us. Now, over the years, we have honored more than two dozen individuals in this way. They're nominated by the Committee on Lay Leadership and then approved by our church conference every fall, including each of these last three years. Now, because of the pandemic, we have been unable to celebrate and worship those persons who were honored since 2020. So, in the spirit of Nehemiah 3, we are acknowledging them by name and story today. We give thanks for Doretha Edgecombe, awarded the distinction in 2020. Doretha was an educator in our school system for over 50 years, starting as a junior high English teacher. And in 2004, she served the first of three consecutive terms on the Hillsborough County School Board and then chaired the board in 2011. She has been a longtime member of this church, a, a faithful attendee in worship, both in person and online. And when she retired from the school board in 2016, she began a new kind of service. She served on our vision team in 2017 and 18, helping to chart the way for our church's future. We give thanks for Lee Levengood, whom we also honored in 2020. Lee was a passionate advocate for education as well, particularly for the education of women. Lee was among the first women to attend the University of Florida after it went co-ed in the 1940s and was instrumental in the full inclusion of female students in its academic and residential life. When she and her husband Victor moved to Tampa in 1959, she began her long, illustrious relationship with the University of South Florida, turning her attention to the education of senior adults in our community. She spearheaded the creation of USF's Division of Senior Programs and became the Director of Adult Learning at the Tampa Bay History Center. She has been a longtime member of this church and active in a number of our discipleship ministries. In 2021, we honored Doug and Sherry Rowland. Doug was a teacher and attorney, Sherry a nurse, both of them gifted musicians and passionate followers of Jesus Christ. They were longtime members of our Sunday School Forum class, and eventually they began to feel the Spirit tug them into what Doug would call the pinnacle of their service and calling. For three years, Doug and Sherry served the people of Peter Meritzburg, South Africa, training people to become Methodist clergy as part of the Seth Mokotimi Seminary. They established the field education program, creating learning opportunities for ministerial students in prisons, schools, and hospitals. By the time Doug died last year, he and Sherry celebrated 49 glorious years of marriage. And still to this day, Sherry is a bright beacon of love and joy, singing in our choir and gracing our campus. And then this past church conference, we honored Haven Whiteside, our 2022 recipient. Haven has given his entire life over to the blessing of being a peacemaker. 
He devoted his early years to serving as a teacher, leveraging his keen intellect and PhD in physics to educate young people. He and his beloved first wife, Rose, would go from shaping minds to shaping consciences, joining the Peace Corps, becoming a member of Veterans for Peace, and joining peace advocacy efforts around the world. He and Rose joined a group called the Christian Peacemakers, literally putting their bodies in harm's way in Iraq, working for peaceful solutions through nonviolence. Despite heartbreak and grief, losing Rose in 2005 and his late wife Anne just this past year, Haven continues to be a source of conviction and courage. He has helped build relationships through our church's missions efforts in Nicaragua and is active in our Portico community through weekly midday meditation services in the chapel. Wow. Friends, let us give thanks for these amazing witnesses to the love and grace of God. In fact, you may choose to type your own message of thanks and congratulations to them in the chat section. Just this past week, someone in the church who is going through a particularly hard time told me, I don't know how people make it when they don't have a church family around them. It's a sentiment that I have heard more times than I can count throughout my years of ministry. It is one of the most important and most overlooked aspects of the Christian faith. To be resilient in life, we need each other. Because here's what's interesting about Nehemiah 3. Not only does it specify different parts of the wall that needed rebuilding and repair, and not only does it give names of ordinary people who each did their part, but it names how each of these persons were connected together in small groups. No one person acted alone to do their task by themselves. In the genius of Nehemiah, he knew that for people to flourish and make their contribution, they needed to work together in small groups. Resilience comes from developing spiritual friendships with people who can come alongside you, people with whom you can celebrate and grieve, share in sorrow, laugh, and join in jubilation. It's why we believe so strongly in becoming part of a small group Bible study. It's why so many benefit from serving together in missions and outreach and discipleship and worship teams. It's what happens when each of us not just find a way to serve, but people to serve with. Resilience happens when we build the kingdom together, brick by brick. There's an old poem from Rudyard Kipling from 1895 called The Law of the Jungle. And it goes like this. Now, this is the law of the jungle, as old and as true as the sky. And the wolf that shall keep it may prosper, but the wolf that shall break it must die. As the creeper that girdles the tree trunk, the law runneth forward and back. But the strength of the pack is the wolf, and the strength of the wolf is the pack. The strength of the pack is the wolf. The strength of the wolf is the pack. That poem by Kipling was a favorite of Phil Jackson, one of the great basketball coaches of our time, winner of 11 NBA championships with the Chicago Bulls and Los Angeles Lakers. His teams were filled with some of the greatest figures in the history of sports. Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal. These are names that if you were to tell the history of basketball through great figure history, it would surely include those names. But Phil Jackson knew that resilience did not come from just great figures, but from every person doing their part and doing it together. So he would often read this poem to inspire his team and his organization to let them know that the strength of each person is found in the strength of the team and the strength of the team is found in each person. Someday, generations to come will tell the history 
of this era of the people of Hyde Park United Methodist. They might mention my name as the person who happened to be its senior pastor at the time, but I surely hope they don't dwell on my name. I'd, I'd even be fine if they skipped right past my name to tell the better stories. Stories of people like you, like, like all of us, finding resilience in each other. I hope our history tells stories of people who discovered, I don't know how I would have made it without my small group by my side. I hope our history includes the stories of the people at the gates, the amazing ministries of people who opened wide the love of God to those near and far. I hope our history includes the people who stood tall in the towers to be witnesses for hope and justice and peace in our time. I hope our history includes names of ordinary individuals who repaired the breaches, healed the broken, and showed compassion and love to each other. I hope our history includes a Nehemiah chapter 3. And I hope to see your name listed there. Let us pray. God, thank you for calling and empowering each of us to do our part and for helping us draw strength from each other. For any of us who are lonely, surround us with the encouragement of others. For any of us who feel helpless, persist in calling us to give what we have and remind us that when joined with the contributions of others, it is more than enough. Show us the gates that need opening, the towers that summon our courage and conviction and the broken places that you can heal in and through us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.